Hey guys, welcome to LG Overdrive. This is season four, episode seven. I'm the host, Kingsman42. With me today, I have UT75. What's going on, everyone? Also with us today, we do have Lazy Kids. What's up, guys? Also, pre-recording for later, we're going to have Dudley join us for his usual top ten segment. And uh, last but not least, I'd like to wish Mackie well, as he couldn't make it today due to being in the hospital. So hope all is well. From taking those L's. <laughs> those L's. <laughs> or his all team, right. at least. Uh, I think kidding. his arms... Arms got too sore from holding up all those signs last week. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. You know you're too my many, boy, Mackie. You know you're my boy. Too many signs. Yeah. Uh, for Mackie and for his buddy, uh, hashtag free C-Train. C-Train. And uh, moving on to our first topic this week, we're going to talk about the All-Star game. It is Thursday. All-Star is currently going on a little bit right now. Uh, but first thing I want to talk about is the captain polls. So... Earlier this week, captain polls went out, so where the community was able to vote on two captains for each conference. Um, so one conference being obviously the West, both divisions, and then the East, both divisions. And then top two for both of those, we're going to captain and do a live stream to pick their own teams. And so for the Western Conference, we had the winning vote-getter Darcy Kemper and his AGM by proxy or co-captain, uh, Malcheski. What are your guys' thoughts on those two? Or Lazy, what's your thought on those two getting uh, captain for the All-Star game? I actually think that's actually great. They're both really talented players. And the votes, actually, the community voted for them. I think they'll build a very solid team for the All-Star game with the players that they select. It just shows you can get banned and still become a captain. <laughs> it just shows that you could be the LG's greatest drunk and still be a captain, regardless of how good you actually are. Yeah. He, you know what, though? He's having a solid season, so. Yeah, he never has a bad season. season. No, but you also he also plays on very good teams. Not not saying that he not has a lot of skill, but he also plays on very solid teams. I've actually never seen Darcy play completely sober, so maybe that has to do with it, too. Yeah. Maybe. Um. Or should I say, sorry, not Darcy, Grandpa Puff 001. Um, moving on to East Conference. Um, so we saw the duo of I'm Just a Squid, and I believe who was the, the co captain? Was it G Thumbs? Yeah, G Thumbs. Yeah. It was G Thumbs. Yeah. I know it was a tight race between G Thumbs and uh, um, what's his name? Goalie from Rochester there, Anchory Fawn. Anchory yeah. yeah, they were one Shout or two points. SP staff buddy there. Angry fun. So, um, thoughts on those two guys getting captain? I think Angry Fun. When and I, I think Angry Fun would have been a good captain. I'll just start on him. You know, he he's pretty much keeping Rochester on his back. You know, he's having an exceptional season. So, but when it comes to G Thumbs and I, you know, I think they're solid picks. They'll they'll put they they put together a solid team. So, I don't think it was enough for tonight, at least, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I find that like I love the idea of the whole captain polls it, but it does show that there is a lot of uh, bias and a lot of like Favorite popularity it's a, it is a big popularity contest yeah, which yeah, I, I for, for captain polls is that's completely fine because nobody knows besides the captain who else is being nominated to the all-star game it's just the captains find out when they do their live snake draft right um, yeah so um, which is great. Bryson's done a great job with this this year. He's got logos. He got Waniyama to do the logos, which are absolutely unreal for yeah, all three were, leagues. They were impressive. Yeah, he did the impressive. NHLs. He did the AHLs. Uh, they're really, really nice. And then now we're going into the live stream of it. So they did their they did their picks. So both teams had to pick three full lines. So three goalies, sixty and nine forwards that included themselves. So for Darcy's team, he only had to pick two goalies. And then for Squid's team, obviously, he only had to pick uh, eight forwards. Um, well, unless, you're, unless you're Darcy and you accidentally, during the draft, pick zero crash extra and then have to trade him away because you realize you have too many goalies on your roster. And <laughs> instead of kicking zero crash out of the All-Star game, the uh, G-Thumbs and 
and them took him in. So he still got to play. So good on them. Uh, yeah. I, I know personally, I didn't get to catch the live stream. Um, I know there's, there's been having issues on YouTube with the, the content. It keeps getting yeah. blocked for copyright. So hopefully they it can was, sort that out because I want to watch it that. Was, it was like watching paint dry, but a little more. Well, it was uh, 53 minutes long. So yeah, it was like watching paint dry and, but, but a little more entertaining, like watching it dry fast. Fair enough. And then moving on to the yeah. the games, um, it's Thursday night. The games are supposed to be played at eight thirty, I believe nine thirty, and then ten thirty or something like similar to that, or nine thirty, yeah. nine fifteen, and ten. Um, uh, yeah, eight thirty, nine thirty, ten thirty. Yeah. Um, I know the first game is already over. We got to watch the lineup that was supposed to be from the Western Conference of goaltender um, was Tatar from Utica, with a couple of. Defense that I was surprised about. I know one of them was Karuch. I don't even know why he was picked. He's not that great of a defenseman. As well as forwards being Mackie, Cadillac, Eldo, and um, K40S Elites. I know Mackie couldn't make it, so they replaced him with Wickedly Moist, which was a big substitution. And then they were playing against Squid with Toffoli and Cacatino, as well as RBK. I am... Um, Someone with the name Deke, and then they had substituted out Jonas Peterson with Lars Bone as their goalie. Yeah, it was rough for Lars Bone for sure. You could tell. Um, yeah. I know that in that first game, that Tucson lineup uh, tore up Lars Bone, and they they won four to one, I believe, in that first game. Second game hasn't started yet. Um, About ten minutes. Yeah, but if you guys watch on the forums, you'll see it in a couple days when this goes up. You know it. It's going to happen before this show even comes out. So, Probably. Yeah, most likely. That's, that's what happens with Dudley record, uh, edit stuff for us. It takes through three days. <laughs> Sorry, Dudley. But not really. i also like to give a quick shout-out to our boy, Notorious Fat. He was going to be making it to this show this week, but unfortunately he did have another commitment before he could come on. So hopefully we'll get him on before the end of the season. Got two weeks left, and then obviously playoffs and everything. So, at least four or five more tries to get him on the show. Um, it'd be nice to see another keeper of the crease come on besides these two. Well, he's a defender now. Yeah, but he's, he's the real uh, official, old like original keeper of the crease. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or whatever it was, something, uh, something within the mask or whatever. I can't remember oh, yeah. it anymore. Yeah, his was I forgot. Life in the called. cage. Life in the cage. Yeah. There we go. That's what it we is. need a little bit of uh, tenderness and loving from our good boy, Notorious Fat, and a little bit sometimes of those cock hammers, you know? <laughs> the everlasting cock hammer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But moving on from Notorious being a defenseman, that brings me to my segment from the point with Kings and 42. Uh, this is where I showcase defensemen, good or bad, this from week seven on whether they got top points, goals, assists, good or bad, plus minus, most hits, or most giveaways or takeaways. So you could be a shitter or you could be a top player. And you get a shout out here. So I'm going to start it off right away with our top point getter and top apple picker. It's the same person, Ambians from Lehigh Valley, who had seven points and seven assists. So... Good on you for getting all assists as a defenseman. That's more important than getting goals. Uh, and I know you score goals sometimes, and it helps when you're having trouble scoring. Uh, like teams like San Diego, uh, I don't know. They've been having trouble all season getting some goals, so it just makes sense that the top goal scorer this week was a San Diego defenseman. Jersey Devils, 27, had three goals this week. Helping San Diego, who are now on an 11-game win streak, and making their push towards first place in that Pacific division now. Impressive. Uh, now moving Zach, on to – sorry. Zaka did something to, to get his guys in a gear. So. Zaka took charge of the team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and now they're trying to make a push for the last playoff spot. Well, they're in that last playoff spot. They've won 11 straight. I believe they're in second now. Oh. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're, they're pretty, pretty high now. I thought they were in fourth. Mm-mm. Moving on to our good plus minus this week, we have another pair of uh, Pacific defensemen, 
Motomizer and X J Lucas from Stockton both went plus 11 this week for the top plus minus in the league. And then our bad plus minus shitter uh, from this for this week was coming from Texas with a minus 11. We have Bear Zombie XLD. Uh, you, sir, are a shitter for going minus 11 this week. XJ Lucas doesn't surprise me. He's coming off a Memorial Cup win last season, so he's, yes, he's solid. Yeah. I know he was a draft pick, and I think he did play in the NHL this season, but got sent down after being traded. Doesn't so, hurt. Good on him. He's a good friend of mine, so good on him. Moving on to our hits. It's week seven. This name has come up seven times. He's won it six times now. Cost the 53. 28 hits this week. Uh, he hasn't watched the show. I was actually in a party with him this week, and I was telling him about it, how he's leading the league in hits. He's leading. I, I mention him every week, even the week he came second. And he's like, yeah, hitting is the best part and his favorite part of the game. So clearly it shows he keeps tossing up almost 30 hits a week. That's 10 a game. Guys. Yeah. I've played, I played behind him. Like He does not miss. Like He will line it up. And crush somebody. He's just got to down it. for sure. Oh, it's great to watch. Yeah, it happened to us right. earlier this week when we played him. He timed us it so perfectly. Yeah. Moving on to the most giveaways this week. A shitter. Uh, we got another Lehigh Valley defenseman, Cage, with 33 giveaways. Oh, That's wow. 11 a game. As a defenseman, you cannot be giving away the puck 11 times a game. That's going to murder your team. Wow. And now with the most takeaways this week, we have Manox and Blue Devs 9 from Colorado and Toronto. Both of them had 21 takeaways this week. That's what you should be doing as a defenseman, seven takeaways a game. That's what you want to do. You don't want the puck going back in your net. You want to stop it and send it the other way. Now moving on, we actually I'm going to do a little bit of an interview with Lazy, and if you have any questions here for him, uh, UT, you can ask as well. But to start, Lazy, how's Toronto this season? Wait, what did you say? It lagged. <laughs> How is Toronto this season? Oh, decent. We had a just a really rough week this week trying to make a push for that last playoff spot. One point out. I think we can. We have a solid team here. I think we can try to make that push after trade deadline. Acquired a really solid D man, and yeah. Speaking of making that playoff push, you were in the playoffs for quite a while, and now all of a sudden you're out. How does that make you feel as the GM of that team? It makes me feel a bit kind of disappointed, but I know we have a great group of guys here who can turn this around. We've had so many line changes and ECUs coming in because Avail was a bit bad these past few weeks. I contributed to one of those losses this week. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, you know. (laughs) I love the goals. <laughs> it was a fun game. Right? Yeah, very fun, uh, actually. It should have been the overtime, speak- but you know. <laughs> Speaking of you letting in goals, are you happy with your personal play this season? Actually, not really. I feel like I can play a- I could probably improve my game just a tad bit. Just had some bit rough double digit games. I let in a bunch of goals. Well, yeah, if, your goal, if your goaltending skills are anything what your shooting skills in PUBG or Fortnite are, um, <laughs> I don't know, man. A bit better than my PUBG and Fortnite skills. <laughs> yeah. That was messed up. We're trying to turn this around here. We're one point out, so I think so, I can up my game a bit. So with you not playing well, are you playing four games, five games, six, three? Uh, four games a week. Uh, I let my backup games? play the rest. That's fine. I really, I'm not playing the best. So I'll put the best player, best goalie in at the time or each week. Oh, we'll talk about him on my segment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, my last question, I don't know if UT has any. Um, Your hopes for playoffs, uh, what are those like? They're pretty decent. I feel like we can scratch together wins or overtime losses. I know a lot about overtime losses. Just trying to Me turn too. those yeah, OT losses into wins into two points instead of one since we're 
We're, we're in a tight race with Rochester. Hopefully, yes. we can turn that around this week and not go two five and two. That would be good. That would be really good. All right, uh, DT, do you have any questions for him? Yeah. So, who do you think your, you know, like your top competition is in the, you know, the Eastern North, which is our division, since you and I are in the same division? Who do you think your top ask. competition is? Who's 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 the you know the hardest teams to play? Uh, I'm gonna have to say uh, Utica and Binghampton because they shut us down most of the time, but our games are really low scoring, so it's like equal defensively that we're playing. Just right. having issues trying to bury the puck in the net. Right, because it looks like you're it looks like you're one point out of a playoff spot. Um, looks like you're about five points, six points away from the Devils, and then ten points behind the second place team, which is the Laval Rockets, which is us, and then everybody's way behind Utica. But catching yeah. up slowly. Yeah, so Utica didn't have a good week. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they we did. Really, we were really you know, a good week. We went from we went from I think we got 12 points this week. We went on a 70 win streak, which brought us up closer to them. Now we're 12 points behind instead of 20 points behind. So, yes, it helps. But besides that, no, you just have to keep, you just have to get set lines. I know it's hard. I, you know, I especially feel it. I played a lot of my losses and big losses have been with TC lines, and I know it's yep. hard. Same. So just keep your head up. Just keep work hard. Keep, keep trying to stop the pucks. Yeah. yeah. Best thing to do is put your put, especially against those teams that you know you have to get points from. Put, you know, the the, the lines that are going to win against those lines. It, if some people call it scrub hunting, if it is, but doesn't matter. It's scrub hunting. Yeah, wins we're championships. just trying to totally look for year. points when we can get the points. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So moving on. Um, without further ado, I'm going to send it to this good guy here. For his top ten this week, oh look at him with his good old mic stand and all, Dudley. I hope you can do your top ten and wearing something like this this week, buddy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Oh, only you appreciate me like like no woman does. Oh. Hmm. Oh. I'm sorry. I just needed some fuel. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, hi, uh, this is Deli Do-Right. Sorry I can't make it in the studio today because I was too busy hosting my own other show called The Late Program with John Trapero. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Knock on wood. <laughs> Anyways, Buck, you got what you wanted. I'm wearing my suit. I look good. Can't say the same for the rest of you. <laughs> hey, get it. Get it. Cause, uh, okay. Well, today's top ten. Uh, for uh, this episode of LG AHL Overdrive is top 10 things that can happen in the AHL before season's end. Okay, Top 10 things that can happen in the AHL before season's end. Here we go, number 10. Darcy becomes sober. <laughs> I put that in there because it's a joke. See, get it? It's a joke, Darcy, sober, joke. <laughs> Number nine, all of Bakersfield is called up by the NHL. Number eight, Buck may actually play in the AHL again. Also, Buck may actually grow an actual beard this time. Number seven, Air Raiders stealing my bit that I stole from Letterman. Oh, wait a minute, that, that actually happened. <laughs> they crossed that out here. <laughs> Number six, I'm just a squid comes out as a squid. Oh, squid lives matter. You do you, my friend. Number five, a salty sailor yells at someone for no reason. That just kind of seems like a regular day for Mr. Steven. Salty sailor. <laughs> I think he's just mad because I wouldn't trade him Claude Giroux in my fantasy league. GG, buddy. <laughs> Number four, all-star game is nuked by Titus's hammer for not being in it. Figures. Number three, Malcheski gets an all-star nod only to quit afterwards. <laughs> Number two, Notorious Fat, more like Notorious Ripped. And the number one thing that could happen in the AHL before season's end, Dudley actually gets good. <laughs> See, it's a joke because it may actually not happen. 
I've had way too much Coke. Soda, not the drug, soda. No drugs whatsoever. Back to you guys in the studio. Moving on now, we're gonna send it over to Keepers of the Crease with UT. How's it going, everybody? I am your host of Keepers of the Crease. Um, before we start, like I said, if anybody wants a breakdown of the Keepers of the Crease for after the um, trade deadline, there is a forum up. There's already some butt hurt people in there. It is what it is. Like I said, it's an opinion based thing that I'm doing for the media. It, it is what it is. If you don't like it, get your stats up. Maybe it'll push you to get better. Um, so we're going to go to our keepers of the crease this week, our top guardians. Uh, this guy surprised me. He did only play two games this week, but he did have uh, good good numbers. That's Den Denisov X2 from, was it Springfield, going 2-0 uh, and with a point nine zero nine save percentage and a 1.01 goals against average with one shutout. So good on him. Uh, moving on. More. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, number two top guardian him is this week. All-star that played today, Lars bone X six zero five from the goals. He went five and O oh, had a 0 0.907 save percentage with 0 0.80 goals against and two shutouts. So He's definitely a big part. Him. He's definitely a big part in the um, productiveness that uh, San Diego's having. So Zaka playing more. He's doing well. And third this week is Texas's Waxy Bone. He went two and two, had a .864 save percentage and two goals against average. So he's putting up respectable numbers. Obviously, those two losses weren't him. So you know, he is playing for Texas. He's got to do what he has to do. So yeah. I'm pretty sure he's the AGM, isn't he? So I don't know if he makes lines or anything like that. But moving on, we'll go to our it's never too late to retire. Mm -hmm. um, this guy usually has pretty good numbers, but uh, I don't know what happened this week. It's Rochester's slippery and net. He is a starting goalie. He only played two games this week. So he went one on one and had a .609 save percentage with 4.50 goals against. So all I have to say is ouch. Somebody got lit up this week in those two games. Yeah. Uh, moving on, we're going to go to the backup goalie for the uh, Toronto Marlies. X, I think that's an I, Dreamy. He had a whopping 0-4 average or 0-4 win-loss this week with a .680 save percentage and a 3.82 goals against average. Uh, Lazy, would you like to comment on what is going on with your backup goalie this week? Uh, had a few rough games with ECU Demon yeah. and ECU forwards at the same time. Right. Tough teams, too. Or okay. some of them were tough teams. And yeah, and that's all. Hey, I got two wins. Well, just tell him. Tell him, hey, you know, but it's never too late to retire. Yeah. <laughs> so going on to our last one, it is, you know, I had to pick it, Stockton for some reason only has Grandpa Puff on the roster. I don't know if they plan on calling anybody up or just playing TCs. But they played this guy in three games. He is a TC, but we're going to go to PHJ314 from Stockton. Went 2-1 and one this week. So he had a winning record, but had a .615 save percentage with 3.33 goals against. On a team like Stockton, you should not have a save percentage that bad playing three games. You should not. Never. Never. So it's uh, never too late to stay in the CHO. So. But uh, besides that, that is Keepers of the Crease. Until next week, LG. Appreciate well, it. The thing for PHJ, too, is that like he's a veteran AHL goalie. And for him to be having an off, like even an off week like that, that's not like him. Yeah, it's it's. but you know what happens. It happens to mostly everybody. You, know, you never know who you're going to play with. You never know which lines you're going to be going up against. You never know if you're going to play, you know, the first lines from Stockton or Stockton and Utica and all these teams, Manitoba, you get, you get, you know, four games of first lines, you know, there's only so much you can do depending on who you're playing with. Exactly. So, so it all depends. Maybe he'll step it up. Yeah. Hopefully. So we'll yeah. Yeah. Um, before we move on to our, our next segment here, um, just a quick all-star update. I'm kind of watching the game. Uh, it's at the end of the second period right now. And uh, Team East is beating Team West 
two nothing. Oh, unless they score this goal with point one seconds left under review, it'll be three nothing. Otherwise, um, this is the Eastern lineup of Krause, Gumba, and Kev with seventh Hammy and zero crash on the back end, and it was no goal, so it's two nothing. Versus the Western team of Malteski, Arctic Blur, Mexican Ninja, Brayson, Jonah, and Iriva. Which surprises me that they're lo- that that Western line is losing. <laughs> I guess when it comes down to it, that that Kev guy is really good in the end. Yeah, from Manitoba, and he's playing um, against his buddy on the other side. Yeah, and I then did. he's got he's got Prowsey on center, so. Yeah. Can't really go wrong there. Krause and Gumba are solid. Yeah. Yeah, it's only 2 nothing. so... Let's see how it goes. Yeah, it's going into the third here. Now, moving on to our next segment, and almost our final segment, is this past weekend was trade deadline. I know all too well all about trade deadline. <laughs> um, but I'm going to send it over to each of you. Uh, I want to hear some winners and losers. Um, Lazy, you can go first here because you haven't talked as much today. I'm going to have to say the San Diego Gulls for getting better at trade deadline. Who did they acquire? Mm-hmm. Hold up. I have pulled up somewhere. Here, if UT wants to talk. Uh, sure. Um, let's see. So this week, I'll, I'll, I'll do. To my team's own horn. From Laval, we, we got the addition of Johnny and Kelly from Colorado. You know, after the addition with them, we were able to shift our lines around and, you know, win seven out of nine games, which, you know, put us in the second in our division. So I think when it comes to being winners, I, I think that that, you know, that helped a lot. When it comes to losers, I would say that Syracuse and Texas still are just trash. Just Trash. I mean, Syracuse is playing with what mostly all TCs. Yes. Like they have nobody on their roster. I don't. I don't even know if that's legal, but <laughs> it is legal as long as they have the cap space. Yeah. Um, yeah. Last I looked, they had eight people on their roster. I can't say we, I did lose to them in four three in a game to their TCs. So, Same. but lost but, four. <laughs> but I guess yeah. they're just hot, top up the hill Mary and see who they have to play for them. So. Besides yeah. that, it's all just been kind of quiet. The goals made moves that they needed to. Obviously, it's working out. Yeah, it's um, one trick there. For some reason, my team traded off Ruthless Vapor and kept our backup goalie to Manitoba, and now he was a good addition to Manitoba. Yeah. So him and Zero Crasher are uh, uh, a good goalie tandem. So, it is. Exactly. Yeah. I see Mil- Milwaukee actually got a bit better, making some trades in here too. Now they're right. fourth. I think, yeah. They're in the hunt. Pretty. Yeah, they're closer than they were last week. Yeah, they're they in Wally Mac from Stockton. Right now. Two points behind fourth. It's a tight race going into there. Yeah. So. Um, I know I had three winners and I had three losers for trade deadline. My three winners, um, Toronto, with the pickup of Lusky at the last minute there. Great defenseman. Yeah. That's a good pickup. Very last you guys. Minute. <laughs> um, I did have Laval as well because of the acquisitions of Johnny and Kelly. Oh, what? They played on my team. Uh, they are a really good duo, like inseparable. The the thing with them is just getting with problem with Colorado. They were it was Colorado, right? Yeah. They didn't yeah. have a center that that worked with them. They could play on any line and any center on the ball. And win games. They showed that this week because their availability was weird. So they can literally play on any line on the wall and win games. They couldn't do that in Colorado. So that's very true. Um, and then my last winner, I, I don't remember it anymore, but I'm pretty sure it it was on along the lines of Manitoba or someone in that in that general Western Conference uh, because they made the small changes to add the pieces that they needed to solidify what they already had. Right. Like teams like Manitoba, Cleveland, San Diego, who are all making final pushes, they made the right moves. Right. Um, My three losers um, are Iowa, Colorado, Springfield, (laughs) all of which within 21 hours traded for me. (laughs) 
no, 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 bad idea. Um, <laughs> this season was my first season in a long time, not being management. I was traded eight times between the AHL and the CHL, and I've been I was waived twice in the AHL. So rough season. Um, I'm I was on bottom feeders all season for the most part. Sorry, lazy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, my CHL teams are all, they've all been pretty good. I'm actually on a pretty solid one now. And now I'm just happy to be not playing. I I don't know. The game is so bad lately, connection wise. Doesn't matter what I do, oh, yeah. I can't. That skip yeah. lag is horrible. Yeah. Oh, it's brutal. And if you're on wireless like I am right now, it's even worse. So, yeah, yeah I couldn't do wireless. I always get that skip lag during games, and it's always at terrible times. As a goalie, yeah. I don't mind it. It's not that bad. As a skater, it's it, it's unbearable. I can't I can't do it. Yeah, it's pretty my bad. My guy just like jump spots on my screen. So, <laughs> yeah, I I Iowa and Syracuse kind of lost the trade deadline there. Yeah, in my opinion. <laughs> All right, they yeah. traded everybody away and didn't get anything back for them really. Yeah. It, it was like a rental player in the actual NHL. They're sending away anyone who's got talent to a team that has a chance to make playoffs. Right. Yeah. Oh. Uh, All right. That's what you were saying, Lizzie. I was just saying, it's, since it's Thursday, all starts. It's 3-3 three to three now in the third with three minutes yeah. left. Yeah, I was just going to get to that. Malcheski has a hat trick to tie the game. And two minutes left in the third period, so... Um, we're just going to end it off quickly here. Um, any shout-outs that you guys would like to give out? Oh, uh, yeah. I'll shout-out, Mackie. Hope hope you're doing well, man. Wish you could have made the show, but I know that you got to take care of you first. Um, go check out that Keepers of the Crease post-trade uh, deadline. It's got some good stuff in there if you want to read about your team's goalies. If not, do you do you, homie. Uh, mate, this, might, this may sound biased, but a shout out to Toronto. Let's just keep playing our game. Let's make the push for the playoffs. <laughs> Fair enough. I have several shout outs here, actually. Um, my first shout out I would like to give to my good boy, Bristol Linen. Uh, one, one episode this season. One episode. Oh, wow. <laughs> Super proud of you. Enjoy spring break this week, buddy. Uh, <laughs> my second shout out. It's kind of indirect, but please pay attention to the chat box on April 13th. It's bound to be lit for the first time in two months. Oh, yeah. Uh, I forgot about that. <laughs> if you don't understand what I'm talking about, uh, it'll be two months uh, ban, like the chat box ban for um, Grandpa Puff 420 will be done. So he'll be back, and I'm sure he'll get banned within another five minutes. You don't think he'll? Like, don't think he'll stay quiet. I have a feeling he might not say anything. Well, if he does say anything, it's a capital like anything bad. It's a capital offense. He gets banned. So, like for good. <laughs> Three seasons, a hundred dollars, not buyout. Oh wow! Like buy. You have to you have to serve the three seasons. You have to pay the hundred afterwards. It's no fun. It's not worth it. And my last shout out is to my good boy Grandpa Puff 001, aka Darcy Kemper. Mm-hmm. Um, he just posted a new thread. Uh, Expose these hoes, Stockton. Their talk, exposing the top line for the Stockton Heat, and whether or not they are scrub hunters. I believe his GIF at the end says, "Are they scrub hunters?" And then it's uh, no fucking shit. It, it's a good read. It's a, it's a good time. It, just the the butt hurt is crazy after these things. Just yeah, crazy. Yeah. I love it. Um, I know everybody gives Darcy a lot of flack. Um, from a media perspective, this season, Bryson has seen it. I've seen it. Um, Darcy's actually been very very mature this this season. For someone who's as intoxicated as Darcy all the time, I really give kudos to him for what he's done so far media wise this season. Um, without any further ado, unless Dudley has a shout out, uh, we're going to end it off for this week and we will catch you guys for episode eight next week and peace out. Oh.
uncontrolled by Harvey. One timer, goes to save. It's a penalty shot. Strength versus strength. Shattenkirk's body position on the case of the Moving into Wheeler. The Rangers wheel one ahead up the wing. And Pucks loose and couldn't get through the roadblock. Bailey's in his own end, headed towards center. He knifed it away. Snapping a pass to Wheeler. Outlet up the middle to Pavel Burry. Score! Pavel Burry! Control. Skates out with it. Big drive. He hit the ball. 